Bob Bradley, Bob Bradley, Bob Bradley. When Toronto FC hired Bob Bradley following the disastrous 2021 season, it was expected. We all kind of assumed that Bob Bradley was the next head coach of Toronto FC, for better or worse. But at the time, most people were okay with it. It was about the most experienced guy in MLS that you could get. A guy with a history of developing some youth players. A guy with a history of success in Major League Soccer everything you would think you would want for a rebuilding team. Since Bob Bradley has taken the helm, it has been disappointing performance after disappointing performance, disaster after disaster for Toronto FC. And he has failed, just straight up failed, at everything he is in charge of at Toronto FC since he has come in. Last night's Canadian Championship quarterfinal against CF Montreal was Bob Bradley's 50th appearance for Toronto FC as the the head coach. In those 50 matches, he has won a grand total of 13. 13 wins from 50 matches, good for a winning percentage of 26%. That somehow is only the fourth lowest winning percentage in Toronto FC coaching history, although it only beaks out Mo Johnston, Paul Mariner, and Chris Armas, all of which got one season at most, Bob Bradley now is significantly into his second season in charge, and that win rate is only getting lower and lower. And this season, Bradley only has two wins from 12 matches in all competitions. Now, when we fired Chris Arbus, he only had two wins in 15 matches. So if Bob gets to stick around for three more games and doesn't win, he's successfully had as bad of a season as Chris Armas did, and Chris Armas didn't even get to play at home. Bob Bradley does. So, what the heck has Bob Bradley failed at? Why? Why is Toronto FC a complete mess? Because on paper, Lorenzo Insigne, Federico Bernadeschi, Richie Larea, Jonathan Azorio, Matt Hedges, Sean Johnston. On paper, we have players, and quite a few of them, that should be succeeding in Major League Soccer, and should all combined be competing for an MLS Cup. I mean, forget about the depth in that conversation because the depth shouldn't be competing for an MLS Cup, but the starting 11, when they're all healthy, which is a whole other topic, probably should. So why the heck does this team suck? Flashback to the start of the 2022 season. Bob Bradley's first season in charge of Toronto FC. And we knew that Lorenzo Insigne was coming in July. We knew that we were going to get another DP, which turned out to be Federico Bernadeschi in July. And at the start of the season, TFC was going, we still had two DPs. We had Alejandro Pozuelo and we had Carlos Salcedo. Remember him? No one really does, but he was also there. And Toronto FC's motto for the beginning of that season was play the kids. TFC had a lot of young guys who were kind of on the edge of the MLS lineup that could potentially do something in Major League Soccer. And we had Bob Bradley coming in and people were like, who better to help these kids become regular MLS starters than Bob Bradley, the guy who took Mark Anthony Kay from being a USL championship player and turned him into a Canadian national team star. And so we went into that season with a youth lineup of Jaquiel Marshall Ruddy, Caden Chun, Luke Singh, Luca Petrasso, Kosi Thompson, Noble Akello, Jacob Schaffelberg, Jordan Peruzza, Io Akinola, Jaden Nelson, and DeAndre Kerr. We had a huge youth lineup. And of all those guys, they all got some opportunities to play in MLS, but of all those guys, who of them have turned into regular starters in Major League Soccer and are regularly starting in Major League Soccer this season? One. Jacob Schaffelberg is the only one, and he's not even on Toronto FC! He's for Nashville now, and he's a gem there! He's playing so well for Nashville! So, handed with basically an entire outfield 10 of young players to develop into starting guys, including Jaquiel Marshall-Ruddy, who raw talent-wise is the best thing the TFC Academy has ever produced, Bob Bradley has turned none of them 
into starting players for Toronto FC. You can argue that he's hampered the development of quite a few of them. Jacob Schaffelberg was playing out of position, was TFC's best player at times in 2021 under Javier Perez. Under Bob Bradley, he was played out of position. He sucked for Toronto FC, he moves to Nashville, starts playing his natural position again. Surprise, surprise, he's great again the second he starts playing his actual natural position at left wing. I don't know what the heck Bob Bradley was doing with Schaffelberg, but it wasn't right. Jaquiel Marshall Ruddy has played irregularly as hell since Bradley came in. You know, he had the opportunity to play Marshall Ruddy a lot at right back and decided not. Nah, Kosi Thompson out of position is the way to go there. And then after playing Kosi Thompson, oodles of minutes last season, decided all of a sudden at the beginning of this season that nah, Kosi Thompson actually ain't it. And Kosi Thompson's barely been playing this year. What happened over the winter that you just decided that Kosi Thompson was your guy and now Kosi Thompson isn't your guy anymore? Luca Petrasso, he's showed some promise, eh? Yeah, until Insigne came in, you stopped playing him and then you traded him. And now, you know, he's getting some minutes for Orlando City. A lot more minutes than a lot of the youth guys are still getting here. Akinola's still a shuttle of himself. Okello's gone. Nelson is gone. DeAndre Kerr whatever. Bob Bradley, we were excited about his ability to develop the youth and play the youth. The play the youth initiative has completely failed. None of the youth are in the lineup and they've all been replaced with just old wrong side of 30 guys that just continuously get injured that have been brought in since. So one creaky thing that Bob Bradley's in charge of that he's completely failed at, the youth development. Next thing that Bob Bradley's completely failed at that we need to talk about is he's not just the head coach, he's also the sporting director. This team does not have a general manager. Bob Bradley is in charge of player acquisition basically for Toronto FC right now. And I mean like for a manager who wants to build his own team, that is fantastic. He had the opportunity. Bob Bradley had the opportunity to build his own team. Everyone that comes in as 100% his job. And so he's had three transfer windows now to fix this team. And there are still holes that have been unaddressed for three transfer windows. Bob Bradley, when he came into this team, we didn't have a number one star starting striker. Three transfer windows later, we still do not have a number one star starting striker. Sure, Jesus Jimenez had 10 good games at the beginning of last season, but I don't think anyone ever thought that Jesus Jimenez was a long-term number one starting option. And then at the second half of last season, when it became apparent that he wasn't working, and then when you had another transfer window this winter, when you didn't have a number one striker, why you get no one? Why do you do two different moves to bring in stopgap strikers in Adama Diomande and CJ Sapon? Neither of which anyone thought it was actually going to fix the issue at striker. Why are we allowing him to push this acquisition off to a fourth transfer window now? Oh yeah, maybe his fourth time around he'll get a starting striker. Really? He started off last season without fullbacks and his solutions were two short-term solutions. Crescito, who was 35 years old and who left after half a season immediately. Richie Larea, he's brought in on loan. That's another thing to point out. What the heck happens when Richie Larea leaves at the summer this season, especially if Nottingham Forest get relegated, but the way he's been playing for Toronto FC, I don't see him not going back there if they end up back in the championship because he's a guy that I think anyone in the championship could use. So what happens when Richie Larea goes back? Is Bob Bradley actually, do we trust Bob Bradley to go in the summer and get both a starting striker and a replacement for Richie Larea? Or is he gonna have the striker set up, get that, and then all of a sudden, oh no, there's this hole at right back that I'm not gonna fill. Because it seems like a lot of Bob Bradley's responses to holes in this team is, ah, I'll just fix it next transfer window. And, the result is you have a hole for half the season. Again, not working. His transfer acquisitions aren't working. And the guys he is bringing in are all older players that he coached years ago in a lot of situations. And he's like, oh, I like you, so I'll bring you back. And it's just, it's not working. His transfer acquisitions have not made the team better. And finally, we've dissed his youth development. We've dissed his players' acquisitions his coaching, his tactics. Because in the end of the day, Bob Bradley is a coach. 
He is a tactician, so obviously the best part of his game, the best part of what he can bring to a club should be his coaching ability, right? So 50 games under Bob Bradley. What is Bob Bradley football? Anyone? What is Bob Bradley's tactics? As far as I can tell, it's try to hold possession of the ball and hopefully at some point one of our good players will do something cool and score. What else has it been this season? Bar magical moves from Richie Larea because Richie Larea has been playing his ass off for no support. Bar amazing moves for Richie Larea and some decent plays from Bernadeschi. What has been our offense? It's been sit. Hopefully we can have most of the ball and hope that one of Azorio, Larea, Bernadeschi, or maybe Insigne can do something and get us a goal. Not good tactically. Has he outcoached any coach in any other game he hasn't adjusted for our weaknesses and when other teams have obvious glaring weaknesses our team doesn't exploit them what i keep thinking about is the first game of this season against dc united dc started a 16 year old center back as their left center back defending our right side a 16 year old center back who never played pro before Going up against Federico Bernadeschi and Richie Larea on the right side for Toronto FC. Those are the guys driving into him. 101. Coaching 101. Tell your star guys who are on the side that the kid is on, just attack the kid over and over again. Every single play Toronto FC should have had that game should have been Bernadeschi and Richie Larea taking the ball right at the 16-year-old. That didn't happen once until the 65th minute of the game when Richie Larea did it himself and then drew a penalty. Surprise, surprise, the second you took the ball to him, you drew a penalty. Why did it take 65 minutes to decide that we should charge the 16-year-old center back who's inexperienced, who's playing the side that our star players are on? What was the tag? Was that not even brought? Did, did he not even mention that to the players? Because looking at the play, it seemed like that wasn't even mentioned. That wasn't included in the pregame meeting. It wasn't included in anything because it took 65 minutes for it to finally happen. That wasn't part of the game plan. Why? You're not exploiting your opponent's weakness. You don't have a plan for any game. It's very obvious he doesn't. So what is Bob Bradley good at? What has Bob Bradley done well at Toronto FC? Youth development, no. Player acquisition, and just generally being a general manager slash sporting director, no. Tactics and coaching, no. Why is he here? And of course, this falls on Bill Manning too. Bill Manning's been the president since 2015. You can say, yeah, Bill Manning won the 2017 MLS Cup. Bill Manning was part of the 2018 Champions League run. Technically, yes, but when Bill Manning arrived in 2015, Tim Bezvachenko and Greg Vanny were both already here. Bill Manning's hirings have been Ali Curtis and Bob Bradley, who were the two guys who have completely caused this mess. Because since Ali Curtis came in, everything went downhill from there. Ali Curtis thought to hire Chris Armas for some reason because he was his guy, and the team just sucks. A fundamental rework, a fundamental change needs to happen with Toronto FC. Back 2013, Tim Bezbachenko, yeah, he'd worked for the MLS head office before. He'd never been a GM before. Greg Vanny, he'd been an assistant coach before. He'd never been a head coach before. I think Toronto FC, we've tried having management and coaching that's experienced guys in MLS. It has not worked. I think this is just, it's burn it, start fresh from the front office perspective because the players you have right now aren't the problem. They are fine. You need to add some depth pieces. You need to get an actual striker. But besides that, with proper coaching, the players you have now should be fine. Burn down the front office because at this point, that is where the issues lie with Toronto FC. The front office, since Tim Bezbachenko left, the management has been not good. Greg Vanny held it together while he was still here. And then after Greg Vanny left, all the issues just became blatantly obvious. 
and they now through three coaches haven't been fixed, through two sporting directors haven't been fixed. Bill Nanny has now shown twice that he's incapable of hiring a sporting director. Get rid of him. Get rid of him too. Why not? It's a mess. The whole club is a mess. Things can't get worse from this point. So why not? It's as, apt, it's as apt a time as any to clean house, just do it. So that is it for this video. Let me know your opinions on Bob Bradley. I'm sure they'll be great down below in the comments. As always, if you like this video, hit like. If you want to see more of my stuff, hit subscribe. Follow me on Twitter, link is down below in the description and I will see you next time.